Welcome once again to Maverick's educational videos on using the Interactive Brokers Trader Workstation. As you're in the workstation, we're going to talk about charts today and customizing, creating, uh, adding indicators, all of those features from here. So first it says type in the stock symbol you want to trade. And let's say that we're trading, um, I don't know, Disney or something. So we type in Disney stock symbol. And then it says, okay, what time period? Do you want daily or do you want some intraday time period to show up? Um, do you want candlestick type of chart or some other type of chart? I'll leave it at, at daily. I'll leave it at candlesticks. Um, we could put in some other things. If you wanted this to show outside of regular trading hours, if you wanted it to show what was happening after the bell, now, usually that's not overly helpful unless the company has a big event. Like if they're reporting earnings, then you'd want to click this on your chart so you could see how it was moving after hours if you wanted to trade it on that earnings report or something like that. So as we select that, it just pulls up a chart with some of what you detailed here. Now, there's a couple of things from the chart. Number one, you can start to drag to draw any lines. If I just start to grab and drag out, it will start drawing lines, as you can see. Um, I can right click and remove all those trend lines. I could, you know, customize it however I want. Say I'm drawing a trend line and I say, okay, well, maybe I don't like the slope of that quite, or I want to extend it out or something. You could actually grab the end of it and reposition wherever you want it and so forth. You can even right click on this line and create a parallel line. So if you thought, well, that's the, ch the channel that we're in or something, you could put channel lines on like that. First you draw the trend line, then you right click on it and you can create a parallel line, which would allow you to kind of continue to customize and, and see that. So if you thought, oh, this is a channel or something, you know, then you can create that parallel line that gives you an idea of the other side of that channel. Of course, you can change the size of what you're looking at here by clicking here. This will allow you to zoom in or to zoom out to see the bigger picture. And for me, I would kind of like to zoom out and maybe get four to six months worth of the data or something like that. If we see uh, different price patterns. That's where drawing these trends and, and trend lines and things can be helpful. For example, Disney had a picture perfect kind of descending triangle pattern. And what a descending triangle pattern is, is you establish a level of support, but the highs are going downward. So you're in a descending triangle. And then in the case of Disney, we broke down and you can see the selling that intensified. Uh, these candlesticks give information that we teach at Maverick Trading. Uh, there's kind of the big four of them that we like. We like the long shadowed candles. Like yesterday, you had a nice hammer candle. This stock is very likely to bounce following that and that extended downturn. Uh, just like this big hammer back here. And you can see following a big downturn, a hammer like that is quite bullish. We like engulfing type of formations where basically you you reverse hard and engulf the prior day's price action that not quite an engulfing candlestick formation but kind of the sense of that. And so anyway, we teach some of those concepts, but if you wanted to change it and not be on a candlestick chart and be on some other type of chart, you can do so. Now, let's remove all these trend lines and show you a few other features. If I right click on this chart, I could turn on crosshairs, which allows me to kind of have these on as I move my cursor around. So as I'm doing charting, rather than dragging those lines, I can kind of create my own support line by just putting my crosshairs there and I can visually see, okay, this is the support level. Um, this might be the resistance. This up here is resistance. And so if you want those 
uh, crosshairs on, you can toggle them on or off. You can right click to hide the legend or to show the legend. And basically what that is, is, is telling you information here that as you kind of go, you can see over here, it tells you the data. So if I put my cursor on a certain day, it'll tell me details. That was April 22nd. The high of that day was 121.89. The low of that day was 118.15 per share, and it closed at 118.27. So H stands for high, L stands for low, C stands for close. We can right click here and we can go in and edit chart. We could just add horizontal or vertical lines. So let's say that we wanted to just snap a horizontal line, kind of a support level in place. We could just right click to add that right here and you'll know that it'll be perfectly horizontal. And it even specifies the price, which is kind of a nice feature wherever you snap it in. Let's do that again and add a horizontal line and then we'll just snap it in place. And again, it specifies the price of that line. We can right click. Um, you can add arrows to the chart. You could add Fibonacci lines. So let's show this feature. If you wanted to drag Fibonacci lines, you could just simply drag it out, whatever you're measuring. For example, let's say that you saw this decline. You can see the bottom, you can see the top. As it started to bounce back, you might say, well, where, what is the Fibonacci retracement? So I'm just gonna drag the size of that range. I'm gonna drag from the bottom to the top, and that, is called a Fibonacci retracement. Here's how far we fell, and then it's retracing its steps back up, and it's and it failed right in that Fibonacci zone. This would be your Fibonacci retracement zone between the 38.2 to 61.8. That's kind of the magic area, and sure enough, it failed right at that 50% retracement, and you can see the decline. So if you're looking to play pullbacks, those Fibonacci retracements can be very helpful. In an uptrend, it would be the same concept, just kind of flipped in reverse. For example, um, if we were trading something in an uptrend, let's say we were trading Occidental Petroleum, which has been in a nice upward trend. Well, you might say, you know, I'm, I'm interested in buying the dip. Well, that's what Fibonacci retracements are, right? After you make an extended move, you often retrace back and, and you buy the dips in an uptrend or like Disney in a downtrend, you sell the rallies in a downtrend. So if we wanted to add Fibonacci lines, if we wanted to measure this out, we can drag it out and then that retraced back right into that Fibonacci zone or we start them over. So if we wanted to go from and measure this move to see where we could buy the dip, we would add Fibonacci lines. And again, you just point and click. You'd get it right on the top of that range, just pull it down, measure to the bottom of the range, snap it in place. And you can see we're now looking at this extended price move and saying, okay, we might be interested in buying the dip if it comes back to our Fibonacci zone, and right there, it came back in that magic zone between the 38.2 to 61.8. That's kind of the, the buy zone in an uptrend. In a downtrend, that would be the, the sell zone, the shorting zone, like in the Disney chart. So uh, this isn't meant to be, you know, purely an educational video. If you want to learn about Fibonacci retracements, reach out to us at Maverick Trading, and we can give you more information and education that way, but this will at least show you how to drag those lines, assuming you know how to use them. Let's remove all of those. We can do some other things, you know, we could click on chart parameters, which we'll actually do from up here in just a moment. You could, um, you know, add other financial instruments. You could compare this to indexes. You can do a lot of different things. Let's say, for example, we wanted to compare this to the S&P 500. Well, we could actually add that comparison and now it's gonna give us a sense of relative strength, relative weakness. 
you can see how much this is outperforming. And the divergence really started back here. This is basically how the S&P has performed is the blue line and how Occidental Petroleum has performed and see that they're diverging, that the relative strength in energy is just off the charts. So if you wanted to compare it to an index or to something else, you can actually add that. Again, you can add different studies to the chart. You can you know, remove commentaries, add commentaries. So if you wanted to type in something, you know, whatever it might be, um, support at 5250 or something, you know, you could put in commentary where you want it, or you could right click and remove all commentaries and it would get rid of that. Again, if I right click, I can remove trend lines. This is the S&P index. So as we change to different stocks, now we can see how they compare to the index. Disney's actually underperforming the index. Occidental Petroleum and the energy sector is vastly outperforming. So you can see relative strength, relative weakness that way. All of these are, again, done by right-clicking. Um, last but not least, you know, you can see some different things here that will take you to other features. So if you wanted to, you know, go to the alert screen, well, you could click there and you could actually add an alert and put in different details that say, you know, if Disney, let's say its last price goes above and then we could put specifications. Maybe I want to be notified if this thing trades above 107.33, maybe I want to be notified. And so we could activate an alert that would notify us if that stock is above that price. Or, you know, you could obviously change it if it's above, below. Again, that's by right clicking and you can click on some of these features. Now, some of these like the option trader and so on, we've got other videos that teach those concepts. We skipped over the chart parameters. We skipped over, you know, some of those because you can do the same thing from up here. You'll notice if we hit edit and chart parameters or studies or lines, there's a couple of different ways to get to the same place, right? We could add Fibonacci's and so on, but let's select chart parameters. You can do it from here or you could right click and do it from here. When you pull up the chart parameters, it basically says, how do you want this chart to look? You know, what indicators do you want? So if I said, you know what, I want a 20 day simple moving average. I would just hit the drop down, select what I want, change the time period. So I want it to be a 20 day and maybe purple's fine. So I apply that to the chart. And now you can see that 20 day moving average is on the chart. Maybe I want Bollinger Bands. So I click okay. I say, you know what? I want the upper band to be in red. I want the lower band to be in red and the middle moving average, which is actually a 20 day, uh, we'll leave it in green. That's fine. Maybe you want on your chart, you know, you don't want to overdo it, but maybe you want some other volatility studies like an average true range. Okay. Well, you could apply that to the chart and, and add it. And let's say that you want that to be a 14 period ATR. You know, you could apply that to the chart. Now it's got that ATR, that average true range down here, kind of telling you how much movement, how much volatility to expect. Well, right now it's averaging about $4.11 of movement per day. That's how much it's kind of, you know, how much volatility there is, how much movement one would anticipate. This can be very helpful in managing trades in terms of, you know, how much volatility to anticipate in the asset you're trading. Because if I go to back to Occidental, it's going to give me a different number because it's a different stock. This one is moving about $3.85 per day. If I go to a really low price stock, it'll be a very low ATR because this is stock specific. This particular stock is only moving 56 cents per day per share on average. So you can kind of get a sense of, again, how these things work by just simply clicking here, 
edit your chart parameters and you can go through and add all sorts of studies. If you want, you know, volatility studies, trend studies, just about every indicator imaginable, you know, regression studies and so on. Again, if you're not familiar with trading and understanding, you probably are going to need to get into some education. And that's where Maverick Trading can come in as we're both an educational firm as well as a prop firm. So not only do we give you access to capital to trade, but we also go through these educational materials, you know, go through and teach you about Fibonacci retracements and dragging trend lines and all these features in technical analysis. So that should be a very good overview of how to chart using the Interactive Brokers Trader Workstation. If you have any questions, reach out to us, visit us at maverictrading.com, subscribe to the YouTube link, and we will see you next time. Goodbye, everyone. Mm -hmm.